May the moon god praise you on this night of many games. I am No Mercy, and this is my first playthrough. And what other game would it be besides my number one favorite game? One of my favorite games from back in the day, and that is Resident Evil 2 1998. And um, I want to start in this view to make it more personal. I keep hitting the uh, <laughs> the key to go up and down because I don't want it to go into cinematics yet. I want to watch it. First time I've seen the cinematic in... Uh, I don't know, a good 20 years, I think. Um, can't tell. I don't know how, how well you can see back. There. Uh, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. Or maybe you could tell if I move my head, you can see the liquor behind me. There's a liquor statue. Uh, if you stick around to the end of this video, this will be more than likely... Uh, bunch of videos versus just one long one of my full playthrough um i'll go i'll give a little tour of some of the resident evil memorabilia that i have and maybe a tour of the room in general okay maybe not the whole room because uh the side that you can't see is under construction so it'll just be a tease for now uh the point of this let's play is I have not played Resident Evil 2 since I would at least say 2000. And uh, I, I've seen people play it. I've watched Baku Soup speedrun it, but I've never fully like watched him speedrun it. One, he skips all the cutscenes and stuff. And uh, two, he... Um, Like, I, I'm not fully paying attention to when he's playing it. I often... I, Bakwa Soup is my favorite streamer. Number one favorite streamer. If you don't know who he is, he streams a lot of survival horror. Mainly horror games. This is genre, but... For as much as he likes to say he doesn't want to be a Resident Evil streamer, he's 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 a Resident Evil streamer. Um, and uh, often I have him up on one of my monitors when I'm working on stuff, so... I get to enjoy him playing games, but I don't get to fully see what he's playing. Which is sometimes good because now I get to play Resident Evil 2 uh, for the first time in 20 years. Like myself actually having to, you know, survive. But not only that, but I, again, I haven't really fully paid attention to what he does. So a lot of this is going to bring back uh, good memories. So yeah, if you actually didn't skip through via timestamp to me starting the game, uh, thank you. And once again, if you stick through to the end, I will have a little bit of a tour. Of some of the Resident Evil collectibles I have. It's not a huge collection, but um, I'm growing it over time. And, uh, yeah. So let's uh, start the game. So we are going to go with the original mode. Uh, I looked up a range mode. Apparently, you get infinite ammo, um, things like that, and items are in different places since I haven't played in. 20 years, I don't know where anything is anyways, so I guess I don't need anything to be rearranged for me. Uh, Outfit-wise, I'm not going to change anything. We're just going to go right into it. We're going to start off with Claire A, and then move on to Leon B, just because um, that is apparently canon. Because in Resident Evil 6, if you consider Resident Evil 6 canon, Sherry mentions that she has superior healing abilities because her dad injected her with the G-Virus. And that only happens in Claire A. So, uh, here goes. Resident Evil 2. A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T-Virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department's Special Stars Unit immediately began investigation. The case was apparently closed thanks to the efforts of Stars members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from finished.
just as a note, this is the Resident Evil 2 PC version, and um, I am running the Rebirth mod. I know it makes in-game textures and things look better. I don't know if it affects CG, like the cutscenes, so... <sighs> I'm finally here. Just a heads up. If things look better than what you remember, then uh, that's probably why. Can't stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. There. Buckle up. Okay. So many memories. What's going on? I arrived in town. And the whole place went Great. insane. The radio's out. You're a cop, right? <laughs> yeah. First day on the job. Great, huh? Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. I came to find my brother, Chris. Hey, could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. You better take it with you. I'll meet you there. Okay. Wow. Um, I'm going to try not to talk through the cutscenes, although I'm probably going to go back on that. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh no, actually worked out better. Alright, let's get to uh Make sure there's nothing over here, item wise. Alright, let's go meet uh our good friend Kendo. Freeze! What are you doing here? Don't shoot! I'm a human! Ooh. Sorry about that, babe. I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I ain't got no clue, darling. 
By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. Now, I haven't played this since 2000, but um, like I said, I've seen Bok Basuk play it um, over the years, never fully paying attention and, uh, to when he did. Maybe that's why it took 22 years since this game to come out that I realized that when he's aiming the bow, the bow dart, bow gun, the crossbow at you, he, uh, I don't know the, I don't, I'm not really a gun person, but I guess he cocks it and it makes a shotgun noise, or at least it makes the noise that a gun would make and not a noise <laughs> that a crossbow would make. <laughs> I only just realized that now. <laughs> I don't remember if you get something from killing the zombies. I think you do. Like, not from the zombies themselves, but from Kendo. Oh, I think you get the crossbow. Is it worth it, though? Shit, I gotta make my decision fast. Uh, fuck, I don't have much of a choice now. I'm gonna say it wasn't worth it. The fucking murder here. get bitten in this fucking shop. <laughs> Gotta wait for the pool of blood. No pool of blood, motherfucker. I'm faking it. There we go. And no music either. Take my bow gun, thank you. I like how the text says he's stopped breathing. When my main concern was getting the bow gun, I was like, oh, you're right. As a decent human being, I probably should have checked if he was actually dead. <laughs> the only thing on my mind was getting my, uh, my bow gun. Down to six bullets already, okay. <laughs> I wonder if the bow gun is... Okay, it's called the bow gun. I wonder if the bow gun is effective versus any specific type of monster. Maybe I'll look it up at some point. Um, let's reload for now. Gosh, it's been so long. Alright, there should be something in the back of this car over here. Yeah, okay, good. Man, they are generous with the bullets. Get me sitting over here worried that I'm gonna run out. any bullets I'm trying to only shoot if I could see them that one should be dead oh shit he's not there you go oh my god he's still not dead fuck's sake dude stay down okay I see the blood puddle no, 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 don't touch me, don't touch me. Probably could have run past these guys, but, um, yeah, I didn't. Don't have to finish him off, that's for sure. Trying to see if I could reload outside of the menu. Don't know if I can. The sound effects and just everything. Incredible. How uh, nostalgic this all is. Even the metal footsteps.
Hey, it's Misty. Hey, Misty. I think that's her name. I don't know if she spits. I want to say she does. Ugh, oh, scared me. Still scary. <laughs> All these years later. No. I know for sure I don't have to kill them. have any text. There's no sign of it. Alright, let's reload. This set of zombies I think I can avoid getting. If I run. If I remember the keys. Fuck. No. Fuck. <laughs> I keep forgetting what the run button is. Oh. Like, don't touch me, don't touch me. Leave me alone. I wonder if I can go down here now that Brad shouldn't be here. I think to get uh, Brad I have to... not pick up anything on the way to the police station. See if this little Easter egg is still here. Oh. Maybe it's not this version. Maybe it's with Leon. There must be an Easter egg here where if I get close to the gate, I'll see a view of an area that was shut off. Like that that was supposedly cut from the game. Like I was supposed to be able to exit this gate uh, initially, like when the game was being developed, and go to another little area out here. But uh, it was removed. I guess I don't know the conditions to trigger it. Ah, the music. Hold on, can I go outside again? I'm expecting like RE1 just for like a bunch of zombie dogs to just pump through and scare the shit out of me. Hey look! This scene kinda matches. That wallpaper. Except, you know, it's not Leon. Hold on. There. There. I've, I've, a little bit of history about myself, besides Resident Evil being my favorite game franchise ever. Um, I have played through the other Resident Evils, almost all of them, except for the Revelations titles. And, um, specifically, I played through Resident Evil 2 Remake. So that's what's more fresh in my mind. <laughs> So like seeing it electronically locked, it's like, oh, I just need to get the, uh, I need to slide under the door. It's like, oh wait, uh, wrong game. Uh, let's not save yet. Card key, okay. I need to get a card key.
Uh, is the room with Martin Branagh? Marvin. Marvin Branagh. No, it's not locked. Okay. Uh. Poor Marvin. Hang in there. Are you the only officer left in the building? Uh, who are you? Claire. Claire Redfield. I'm looking for my brother, Chris. We lost contact with him over ten days ago. Chris, Jill Barry. Every last Stars team member has disappeared. We should have listened to them. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving these zombie-like creatures in a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other STARS members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything, at the risk of their own lives. But no one believed them. Are you okay? Don't worry about me. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But... Just, just go. Okay. Just hang in there. I'll be back soon. Ooh, there's a paper. Which I'm not going to be able to pick up because I think he's going to lock it as soon as I leave. All right, well now I have the key card. Let's unlock those doors. Oh, the, the double doors to the liquor hall were also locked. I didn't know that. I thought I was just being proactive. This is the only way I could have head, headed anyways. Which way do I go? Liquor hall. Or other not liquor. <laughs> There's going to be lots of zombies this way, aren't there? If you're not one to kill lots of zombies so that you don't have to deal with them again, this playthrough may not be for you. I like to kill everything in sight so I don't have to worry about them again. Unless it's like a hallway I know I'm only going to pass through once. Like, on the way to the RPD, obviously, there's lots of them that I skipped. But, um... If I'm going to repeatedly have to pass through, I'm, I'm just going to murder them and just spend the bullets. Police Memorandum August 23rd, 1998 This letter is just to inform everyone about the recent movement of equipment that has happened during the Precinct's rearrangement. Safe with four-digit lock has been moved from the STARS office on the second floor to the eastern office on the first floor. 2236 Raccoon Police Liaison Department. Okay, so this is the safe for the room that uh, I just ran away from. Um, I wonder if there's anything in here. Oh. Well, I guess I can put the ink ribbon back. Knife! That's actually a really. I didn't even think of using the knife. Oh, the desk. We need a lockpick, right? Will I use a lockpick? Wait, is this like other Resident Evils where I have not Okay. I have an infinite amount of lockpicks. Or at least this lockpick doesn't break like the other cheap lockpicks from the other games. Oh, nice. I already got a first aid spray. <laughs> that fucking liquor. And this view that will never be seen again, besides uh, this one time.
Oh my god, you could hear the liquor. You could hear like the, the clapperings, the, the nails. Can I shoot the screen? Is this where I can shoot the screen? Here we go. Oh, it's not the nails, it's the blood dripping. I think I need the club key for this. Spade key. <gasps> Curious if the bow gun does any more damage than uh, a regular gun would. Fuck it. Figure it out. And a whiff. Ah! Eh. I used all 15 rounds with that? How many bows does it shoot at once? What the fuck? Oh no. <laughs> No wonder he died so fast. I fucking shot 15 arrows into him. Oh, for fuck's sake. Man, um... Fun little Easter egg, if you don't know this. If you look, I can show you with my cursor right here. If I leave the room and come back, you're not going to see this. And I know it's hard to make out what it is. Initially, when Resident Evil 2 was being developed, uh, the, what you just saw, the cutscene of the liquor coming down, wasn't supposed to be there. It wasn't supposed to be a cutscene. What it was going to be is once you went uh, and ran, you know, walked over the body, or I think maybe you inspected the body, this right here is the cop's head. As you see, the cop's head is missing over here. So that's his head. And, uh, wait, I don't think it would have triggered if you weren't the body. I think if you would have kept walking, yeah, to the blood puddle, then the head was supposed to have dropped down and, you know, scared you. And then I guess the liquor would have showed up somehow. Like, I don't know. But yeah, this is the head. I think you can kind of tell, like, maybe this is, like, the forehead and this is the hair. But, uh, to prove my case, after I pick up this herb, um... It only shows up the first time you go into the room. It's just basically an asset they didn't bother to remove after they put this uh, cutscene in. And now when I come back, it should be gone. Yep. See? Not here. Yeah, there's a little fun fact for you. Um, Alright, let's keep moving. trying to prepare myself. I know at some point the uh, arms break through those wooden pallets. Just kept telling myself like, nope, yep, it's gonna pop out any second. Don't be scared, don't be scared. Operation report. September 26. The Raccoon Police Department was unexpectedly attacked by zombies. Many had been injured. Even more were killed. During the attack, our communications equipment was destroyed and we no longer have contact with the outside. Huh. How did zombies destroy the communication equipment? Um, we have decided to carry out an operation with the intent of rescuing any possible survivors as well as to prevent this disaster from spreading, spreading beyond Raccoon City. The details of the operation are as follows. Secure security of armaments and ammunition. Chief Irons has voiced concern regarding the issue of terrorism due to a series of recent unresolved incidents. On the very day before the zombies' attacks, he made the decision to relocate all weapons 
to scattered intervals throughout the building as a temporary measure to prevent their possible seizure. Unfortunately, this decision has made it extremely difficult for us to locate all ammunition caches. It has become our top priority to recover these scattered munitions. To unlock the weapon storage. As stated earlier, it will be extremely difficult to secure all the ammunition. However, a considerable supply still remains in the underground weapon storage. I think they're referring to the locket, the, the locker where I get the side pack and, and or the submachine gun. Unfortunately, the person in charge of the card key used to access the weapon storage is missing and we have been unable to locate the key. One of the breakers went down during the battle and the electronic locks are not functioning in certain areas. It has become the first priority to restore the power in the power room and secure those locks. Recorder David Ford. Oh, another report. September 27th, 1 p.m. The West Barricades has been broken through and another exchange ensued. We sheltered the injured in the confiscation room on the first floor temporarily. 12 more people were injured in the battle. Additional report. Three additional people were killed following the sudden appearance of an as of yet unknown creature. This creature is identified by missing patches of skin and razor-like claws. However, its most distinguishing characteristics is its lance-like tongue, capable of piercing a human torso in an instant. Their numbers as well as their location remains unknown. We have tentatively named this creature the Licker and are currently in the process of developing countermeasures to deal with this new threat. Really? I guess it's a police department, but kind of interesting how they saw like an otherworldly monster like um a liquor and then just it's like, oh we'll uh we'll figure out a way to handle it. It's like, okay. Eh. Uh another little fact is the initial Resident Evil 2 that shipped out on PS1 had soda machines that had a blue can that was called Coca... Coca Soda? Cola Soda? Basically, it was a ripoff of the Coke can, but in blue. And, uh, I guess Coke came knocking. And, um, Capcom went and changed it in all other future versions of Resident Evil 2 with either a different Coke can, I think, kind of like you see, or sorry, a, a soda can like you see there. And some they just straight out replaced with coffee machines. Guess that was easier. I thought there was a map I could pick up. Guess not. Uh, this room, if I remember correctly, I'm gonna need a lighter for. I don't have one. Leon starts with it. I get the lock pick. I think. So nothing to do. expecting there to be zombies and I panicked so I ran away <laughs> uh, I'm gonna kill them there's way too much passing through this hallway to, to not let me kill a uh, yellow boy over here first I said yellow boy over here first please don't bite me please don't bite me <laughs> Yeah, okay. We're good. Let's see if the evidence room is locked. Yeah, a diamond key. Nice. Many healing items. I haven't even used one yet. I haven't been bitten once. The save room theme. I don't know. Uh, put down below in the comments what your favorite save room theme is. 
If I had to pick, I would say RE2 has to be number one. It just has to. RE7, maybe, for me, would be number two. Um, trying to think of other ones. I can't remember three, one, four. Off the top of my head. Eight was pretty good, but it feels like you don't really hear it in many. A village, whatever. It feels like you don't hear it that often, so I don't know if I could fully claim that it's in my top five. Operation Report 2. September 28th, early morning, 2.30 a.m. Zombies over in the operation room and another battle broke out. We lost four more people, including David. Aw, oh, David was the one writing all these reports. Now who's writing them? We're down to four people, including myself. We failed to secure the weapons cache and hope for our survival. Continues to diminish. We won't last much longer. We agreed upon a plan to escape through the sewer. There's a path leading from the precinct underground to the sewage disposal plant. We should be able to access the sewers through there. The only drawback is that there is no guarantee the sewage disposal plant is free of any possible dangers. We know our chances in the sewers are slim, but anything is better than simply waiting here to die. Fair point. In order to buy more time, we, looked, we locked the only door leading to the underground, which is located in the eastern office. We left the key behind in the western office and it's unlikely that any of these creatures have the intelligence to find it and unlock the door. I pray that this operation report will be helpful to whoever may find it. Elliot Edward. Good report, Elliot. Appreciate your concern. Oh, right. Um, let me drop some stuff off. This is where the costumes come from. Okay. I'm definitely going to save this time. Not so much because I think I'm going to die, but more for uh, if the game crashes. Actually, let me check out the dark room first. I can develop film here. Yes, I can. Alright, let's save now. Huh, I wonder what that is. Oh, there's already save files there. Interesting, okay. It's kind of crazy to see 2021 in a save file for Resident Evil 2. It's like, whoa. It is 2021, isn't it? Um, Alright, let's head upstairs. That's the only way to go. Well, besides across the hall to that other room that has a shit ton of zombies I don't feel like fighting. This puzzle. I remember this puzzle. Alright. Let's, uh, solve it, I guess. Since we're here. And. Push. Push. There you go. I should have pushed it the other way, not this way, but if I don't push it against the wall, I don't think it should matter. See how good I am after 20 years. 21 years. Shit, it's been 21 years. I'm old. <laughs> I was 13 when this game came out. Nice. First try. I'm sorry, that, that noise 
that sound effect is the fucking ruby breaking, and it is clearly not broken. And I will not believe otherwise. Oh, thought I was supposed to meet Leon here. Oh, okay. I remember seeing that. Uh, this is Chris's desk, my brother. And the jacket you see on the wall here is actually an alternate outfit that you can make him wear in Resident Evil 1. And as you see from my vest, it's based on the same one. I actually just found that out this week. I, I never knew that before. And Made in Heaven is a reference to Queen, the band Queen, to one of their songs. Apparently, uh, somebody in the development team was a really big fan of Queen. There's other Queen references uh, throughout Resident Evil. I think one of them to uh, Billy Cohen from uh, Resident Evil Zero as well. Forgot what about him it was a reference to Queen, but yeah. Also, another fun fact, uh, right here is the gold emblem from Resident Evil 1. I, I know it could just be pixelated yellow block, but I saw a video somewhere on YouTube, so it must be true, that uh, this is supposed to be the gold emblem from Resident Evil 1 that you use for the, the puzzle for the plant room. And uh, one last Easter egg in this room, and then I'll pick up the Chris's diary. Which I know I missed. It looks like a rookie's. I think this is Rebecca Chambers' desk, which is why it has the first aid pack. I can't pick it up. Am I confusing with Resident Evil 2 where there's a first aid over here? Yes, so. Uh, one last little Easter egg over here. This is apparently an image of um Back to the Future 3. Uh, I never would have guess i don't know who figured that out again it was on youtube so it must be true but they did share a side-by-side -side picture with back to the future 3 and it is from there again i don't know how that relates to resident evil but it's this little easter egg Ooh, you get the grenade launcher already nice uh let me check out the rest of this room before i pick up um Before I pick up the diary, because I think that triggers something. So there should be a metal underneath it. Some sort. Hey, it's my brother. I want a trophy. Sweet. Nice. Where's Wesker? Oh, the sunglasses, of course. There's Brad Vickers, Barry, Chris, Jill, Joseph, Richard, Enrico. I'm just trying to think of their names, of the other members. Um, oh, this is uh, Wesker's desk. I searched through it 50 times. I should get a uh, a picture that he kept in his desk for some reason. And. Uh, a picture of Rebecca in a basketball uniform. Spoiler alert. Why am I getting it? I don't know. Just the tradition. I don't even know how somebody figured this out. Like, who sat here clicking 50 times on something? Like, it had to be like a developer who just happened to leak it. Because I just think, like... Who figured that out on their own? And if they figured it out on their own, did they go to every single like text icon and click on it 50 times and then this one just happened to show something? Ooh, more handgun bullets. 
Man. They make sure you don't lose anything. Like, or They make sure you never run out of ammo. Oh, the Back to the Future 3 image is still here, too. On, uh, I'm assuming this is Barry's desk because the guns, the fishing, and the family photos. This is Diary. August 8th. I talked to the chief today once again, but he refused to listen to me. I know for certain that Umbrella conducted T-Virus research in that mansion. Anyone infected turns into a zombie. But the entire mansion went up in that explosion, along with any incriminating evidence. Since Umbrella employs so many people in town, no one's willing to talk about the incident. It looks like I'm running out of options. August 17th. We've been receiving a lot of local reports about strange monsters appearing at random throughout the city. This must be the work of Umbrella. August 24th. With the help of Jill and Barry, I finally obtained information vital to this case. Umbrella has begun research of the new G-Virus, a variation of the original T-Virus. Haven't they done enough damage already? We talked it over and have decided to fly to the main Umbrella headquarters in Europe. I won't tell my sister about this trip because doing so could put her in danger. Please forgive me, Claire. No. I do not forgive you, Chris. Ah, the unicorn medal. Which is also on my shelf behind me. Shit. I think I run into Leon here and he's gonna give me something that I can't pick up. Oh no. Oh no. Yep. Maybe if I don't read it. I hope this doesn't break anything. Let me run back and put some stuff away and then pick up the facts. I'm pretty sure Leon walks in at that point. And then when I leave the room, I think I see Sherry for the first time. I mean, I'm pretty sure the programmers of the game accounted for me having full inventory at that point, but... I don't want to break anything. Pop this off. Get that developed later. Keep the grenade launcher in case I run into anything scary. But I don't think I run into Mr. X on this playthrough. I think he's only on uh, the B scenarios. I'm getting confused with RE2 Remake. In RE2 Remake, he's in both. But I think he's only in the B scenarios in uh, regular RE2. Federal Police Department. What? I think I've ever heard of that. Internal Investigation Report. Uh oh. Mr. Chris. Mr. Chris. Mr. Chris Redfield, Raccoon City Police Department Stars Division. As per your request, we have conducted our internal investigation and discovered the following information. Regarding the G-Virus currently under development by Umbrella Inc., so far it is unconfirmed that the G-Virus even exists. We're continuing with our investigation. Good job, guys. Regarding Mr. Brian Irons, Chief of the Raccoon City Police Department, Mr. Irons has allegedly received a large sum of funds in bribes from Umbrella Inc. Over the last five years, he was apparently involved in the cover-up of the Mansion Lab case, along with several other incidents in which Umbrella appears to have direct involvement. Mr. Irons had been arrested under suspicion of rape on two separate counts during his years as a university student. Oh shit. He underwent psychiatric evaluation as a result of the charges but was released due to circumstantial evidence as well as his phenomenal academic standing. As such, extreme caution is advised when dealing with him. 
Jack Hamilton, Section Chief, Internal Investigations, United States Federal Police Department. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, I still don't run into Leon. I must be getting ahead of myself. And no Sherry either. Shit. Okay. Oh, and you need a spade key to get through there. Fuck. Oh, first has been on the screen. Sorry. Um. Shit. Where do I get this spade key from? I mean, the only place I have to go is the other side of the police department, so I guess we're going over there. Oh man, they're gonna force me to pass by, um... The windows where the arms come out and grab you. But it's not scary if you expect it, right? So. Oh, oh god damn it, it's so scary. I didn't mean to run so wide directly into the arms either. I feel so stupid. I knew they were gonna be there and they still fucking scared me. to figure out if I should use the grenade launcher against the big group of zombies over here. Just to save on ammo. Instead of trying to use handgun bullets on everybody. I don't want to get bit. My first bite. Fuck it. looking down but they're all dead. Um look at him. Look at that fucking guy in the bottom left hand corner. He keeps moving his head wherever I walk. Dick. Fucking playing dead. I should have carried the knife whenever they get down, I should stab them. Two, two, three, six. Nice. They are generous with ammunition. I did not remember this. I don't think he's dead either. He can't grab me. 
playing that way. Or can he? Okay, good. I thought there was something on him, that's why he came back. I don't think he actually might be dead. Okay, let's combine them. Ah, the atmosphere. Another one. Fuck. save some of these loose green ones for when I get blue and uh, red herbs later on. Oh. oh shit. Oh, I need to go to the interrogation room past a giant group of zombies. That hallway's open. in the meantime. Maybe I shouldn't have aimed up? Is that overkill? Oh, fuck it, they're dead anyways. Evil 2. It's been so many years. Again, like, I, I've seen people play it here and there, but to actually physically, like, you know, be in control is something I haven't done in a very long time. Oh, the unicorn metal. Forgot I could put that inside the statue, too. Oh, what else do I need? I need an ink ribbon to save. An old fountain. Something's written here. To obtain the key to open your heart, I will wait. I'll wait for the unicorn, the beautiful beast. Yes. That is the heart key. Didn't it just say get to your heart? I thought you would give me the heart key. <laughs> I figured the heart key's last because it leads to the sewers. That's why I don't get what she said. The key to your heart. This way is where I need to go. I'm gonna, now that I clear this room, I'm gonna go down to the hallway where the interrogation room is. But not before I pick up this herb. What? Nothing is wrong. I would not have suspected something was wrong when I inspected the coke machine. 
soda machine, sorry. Not Coke. I don't want to waste any bullets, but I can't see who's beyond me. Or beyond this zombie. Okay. I'm cheating. Okay, good. There's nobody there. Or else she would have turned. Skate. When you aim, generally we'll aim at the nearest uh, monster, the nearest mob, whatever. So that's how I knew somebody was down the hallway because she auto-aimed that way. Diamond key. Don't have that. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Oh no, is this the one that... with the liquor? If the liquor burst through this door, do this mirror or the other one? I'm scared. I know that much. Oh, it's that clay block that goes behind uh, Chief Iron's desk. Yeah, I'm definitely not at that part of the game yet. All right, let's try the uh, door thing. Club key. Fuck's sake. So this key does nothing on this side. Got it. Spade key was on the other side. Great. Okay. stuff off. open this door. I think it opens this door and the door next to the star's office. I will try both. Patrol report. September 20th, 9.30 p.m. Reporter Sergeant Neil Carlson. We received a report of a suspicious individual skulking around the sewers in the outskirts of Raccoon City. I searched the area and located the individual, but he ran away before I was able to question him. I recovered the following items. A small amount of C4, plastic explosive, an electronic detonator, 9 by 19 parabellum rounds, infrared scope broken. End of report. What the fuck? Is that really the excuse they have to have the C4 here in the evidence room? It's, they caught somebody with it? The fuck was going on in Raccoon City? That fucking guy was walking around with explosives. Yay, the crank handle. Or I guess it's just a crank. The valve handle I'm just confusing it with. I wonder if I'm finding everything. 
my muscle memory is like knowing where to search, but I wonder if there's anything I've passed. I don't know when these arms are going to burst through. And I do think that they damage you, so... There's no point in needlessly getting hurt. I'm going to try the evidence room. I don't think this works here, though. No, that's a diamond key. Uh, do I have to drop anything off yet? I don't think I used that yet. Ten saves, man. They really are generous with the uh, amount of supplies. This is normal. Like, there was only two difficulty settings. This is the hardest of the both. Of the two. disturbed. I could have sworn I run into Leon in this room. Unless it's Leon running into Claire and I'm in the wrong scenario. Just trying to see if I forgot something. Like, I, I forgot to do something that would have triggered the cutscene where I meet Leon. It's not this one. Because when you meet Leon, it's not this scenario. When you meet Leon, he makes a comment of, I don't think we're going to find your brother here. But he only would know that by reading Chris's diary. And obviously, if I find Chris's diary, he can't tell me something that I already know. Okay, so it's not this one. But meeting Sherry is, uh... At least meeting Sherry is what I knew was uh, one of the two things I was expecting. All right, I got rid of the bait key already. Yeah, there he is. Okay, I meet him this way. Claire, you made it. Yeah. Don't no, thought too surprised. Have you seen a little girl around here? Yeah, you just missed her. Who is she? I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. Of course. But before I forget, here's a radio. That way we can keep in touch if something comes up. Thank you, Leon. Get me some handgun bullets. Also, fun fact, if you don't know, because I didn't for the longest time, I was always so curious, because I, I played this game so much back in the day, before I finally stopped, but like in 2000. I always wondered, where does this door go to? Why, why can't I figure out the room that it goes to? And you pass it. It's it's the room that has the uh, the two statues that drops the red ruby, that, that puzzle. It's the other side of that. That's why that door never unlocks, because as you can see here, it's bolted shut. But, uh, yeah. That's the, uh, that's how Sherry gets through, by crawling out from there. 
but we are going to call it here for this episode. Uh, made good progress. We finally encountered, we found Leon again after being separated by the tanker explosion, as well as encountering uh, Sherry for the first time. I didn't forget what I had said before. That at the end of the episode, I was going to show you the, uh, the, um, Resident Evil, my Resident Evil setup. Excuse the uh, little editing magic. Uh, like I said before, the right side of the room is under construction. So, uh, it's kind of messy. So... As you see here, there's the liquor statue I got off of eBay. My wife got me off of eBay as a Christmas present. Pretty cool looking uh, statue. Not the most detailed, but there's not many Resident Evil 2 memorabilia out there. And I say that knowing full well that there are two statues that are about $3,000 together <laughs> that I really want to buy but can't afford. Uh, so there's that that I have. And there's also when I move my head. those. Actually, let me crank up the light. It'll be easier to see. There we go. Yeah, those are the three medals from Resident Evil 2 Remake. I guess technically it's from RE2 1998 also. Uh, and almost, I think it's every single Resident Evil Funko Pop that they made. The Tyrant Nemesis Liquor Hunter. And then you have Jill and Jill from Resident Evil 1, Leon from Resident Evil 4, and that is a custom Funko in the middle of Claire from Resident Evil 2. Uh, over here, some more Resident Evil figures. Uh, some of those toys I had since I was little. And some of them I recently bought off of eBay. Uh, I also collect the vinyls for Resident Evil. They are in another room, though. Like, I don't have them hung anywhere. And I think the last thing here is the... You could make it out. I know it's a little bit hard. That's a Leon and Claire pin that I purchased from a vendor at uh, TwitchCon 2019. As well as the pre keys. So, yeah. Uh... Those are some of the things I do hope to show off my room at some point soon once I get it uh, not so messy. But in the meantime, one last thing that I forgot. Give me one second to get it. Besides my Resident Evil 2 shirt, I fucking love this shirt. I love the, the artwork for Resident Evil 2, the cover work. It's amazing. Um, I feel kind of stupid playing Resident Evil 2 right now because I'm walking around looking for all the pre saint keys when uh, I have them right here. Uh, another gift from uh, my lovely wife. But yeah, that is it. I will continue this um, uploading episodes for my run of Claire A, as well as Leon B, more than likely right after. Uh, like I said, I am new to Let's Plays. And if you like the video and would like to see more, uh, what's the saying? Smash the like button, hit subscribe. <laughs> But no, it really does help in terms of the YouTube algorithm, so if you could take the time to do that, I would greatly appreciate it. But for now, I will see you in the next episode. Bye.